From a serve that helps her dominate every service game to how her mental fortitude helped her win Wimbledon 2022, here's why tennis players are really scared of Elena Rabakina. First of all, you can't talk about Rabakina and not take notice of her serve. It's arguably the best serve on tour, and her ability to use it well has made her just so tough to beat. Players simply don't like having to deal with that consistent serve, which isn't only powerful, but also seems to find all the right angles to make any kind of return awkward. Rabakina targets the corners repeatedly, and the execution is near perfect. She isn't someone in the mold of, say, John Eisner or Milos Raonic, but I'd compare her serve to Roger Federer's to some degree. It's obviously not as accurate, and she definitely can't get it to jump after the first bounce, but it's good enough to dominate the WTA. Elena gives very little breakout opportunities because her consistent serve keeps on finding the spot. And even if you manage to return the ball, it's a weak return that won't be winning you any points. Your best bet against someone like Rabakina is on a slower surface, where you could stand further away from the baseline to take the sting out of her serve. But that's where this Kazakh star gets even more dangerous. She's added a wonderful second serve to her arsenal too, and that might just be even more lethal. Obviously, it doesn't have the same power, but it's a lot more accurate and allows her to get into position quick enough to take control of the rally. So, to land the perfect serve, you need to either have monstrous power like Serena Williams, or you need to be serving from a higher angle. For Elena, it's the latter because of her height. Everyone on tour hates playing Rabakina because of her height. She stands at over 6 feet, and that allows her to serve from an angle that is insanely difficult to deal with. The height advantage is an important one for her because it allows her to carry out play, not only from the baseline, but also when approaching the net. Now, she's not too fond of approaching the net, but the Kazakh is extremely aggressive from the baseline. It's a high-risk approach, one that's not used too often in women's tennis. But when you have the tools to execute this ability to finish points quickly, then why wouldn't you use it? Rubakina depends a lot on her ability to find the Hollywood winner but it also makes her more prone to accumulating unforced errors. Still, this effortless power off her serve and ground strokes is truly what sets her apart, and it's all down to her magnificent frame. It's a nightmare for the opponents to handle, because she's hammering down cracking the ball big time off both of her wings. It's simple, if you want to win consistently, you need to be able to control rallies, and because of her height, this is something that comes naturally to Rabakina. But her ground strokes are just as much of a problem, if not more. What no one expects from Elena when taking her on for the first time is her generation of powerful ground strokes. If you've seen her play, you'd agree with me, she's just too graceful. And it doesn't seem like she's putting in a lot of effort and producing a lot of power in her shots. That's why the eye test isn't the most reliable way of judging a player. Almost all her opponents talk about how much of an issue it is to deal with Elena's big forehand, but many have noticed that she can produce as much power off her backhand too. That's not entirely accurate, but given how her backhand isn't her primary weapon, it's still a significant blow for anyone who attempts to target it as a weakness. Opponents have made the mistake of taking the game to her backhand, and I call that a mistake because they've paid dearly. Elena takes no prisoners from the other wing either. In fact, she's more happy and comfortable to play out from her backhand, and to me, that's wild. You've got someone peppering down aces. If you do manage to return one of her shots, you need to be careful to avoid her forehand. So, what do you do? You target her backhand, right? Only to get destroyed from that corner because she's got a monstrous backhand too. Despite this ability, I've got to talk about how everyone on tour hates Rabakina for not making mistakes. Tennis is a simple game. You either hit the ball hard enough for your opponent to not return it, or you hit at a decent angle to win the point. What do you do against someone like Rabakina, who is herself destroying the ball every single time with her sheer power, and is quick enough to hold her own on the angles? You wait for her to make a mistake. Now, remember how I mentioned how Rabakina has a high-risk, high-reward approach? Well, according to many big names on the WTA, like Iga Swiatek and Arena Sabalenka, it's impossible to crack Elena because she doesn't make many mistakes. Iga called her a tough opponent because of her consistency and ability to avoid mistakes. You're not too bad yourself, Iga. And if she's praising someone for not making mistakes, you know they're good. I mean, she does come up with unforced errors, but if you're going to rely on her to make a mistake as your prime strategy, then you might as well award her a walkover. Look at her performance at the 2023 Indian Wells. It was easily one of the best tournament runs of Elena's career. She was tasked with a tough run, 
having to take on Sofia Kennan and Paula Padosa in the first two rounds. She came through unscathed, and it was only possible due to her big serve. That monster serve, which I broke down for you earlier, helps her big time during tiebreaks in particular. Kennan doesn't have an answer in both of the two tiebreaks she played against the Kazakh, and neither did Karolina Machova in the quarterfinal in Indian Wells. But remember Iga talking about how Elena doesn't make any mistakes? I don't blame her. She just faced the best version of Rabakina fans had ever seen in the semifinals of the Indian Wells. She destroyed the world number one, six, two, six, two. And Iga is someone who likes to be super aggressive herself. So take a moment to reflect back on what a monster performance this was. Yet her job was far from done. She had to take on Arena Sabalenka, someone who defeated her only a month or so ago at the 2023 Australian Open final, and she was in great form. Sabalenka had no plans of going down easy. Being a tall player herself, Sabalenka forced the issue. But the Belarusian couldn't deal with the rain of aces that kept pouring down from the other end. She couldn't handle the smoke as Rabakina cruised to a 7-6, 6-4 win in a wonderful final. On top of her tangible skill set, Rabakina has unrivaled mental strength. Many analysts have talked about the biggest strength that Rabakina possesses, and most of them believe it's her mental ability to remain at the very top. Jim Courier, in particular, was impressed with the way Elena handled herself during the Oz Open run, and the likes of Chris Everett and Tracy Austin noticed this way before she even won Wimbledon in 2023. I'm sure they saw a bit of themselves in Rabakina, especially with the way she deals with pressure, and how she just never seems fussed. Fans may not like her cold demeanor on court, but more than cold, it's just her being calm and composed. That's an important skill to have. It's good to let emotions out, but not letting them get the better of you is one of the keys to success, and Elena knows that very well. After all, if not for her mental fortitude, she would have crumbled in the Wimbledon final. Let's not forget that the Kazakh was trailing in the 2022 Wimbledon final against Ange Jabeur. She'd been outplayed completely by someone who was a better grass court player than her. Yet this mental ability to not give up, no matter how hard things get, is what separates Rabakina from the rest. What surprises me the most is that she displayed this mental ability at the tender age of 22, back when she won her first major. This is what tells me that Elena is going to be a force for years to come, and it's hardly a surprise that players are terrified of playing her. Jaber was a set away from the biggest title of her life, but the way Rabakina fought back, oof, it was impressive to say the least. If I remember correctly, she didn't give up a single breakpoint opportunity in the second or third set, and to do that, knowing you're a set down and still adopting a brutal high-risk approach, it's definitely scary. So, from her mental fortitude that helped her win Wimbledon in 2022, to her brutal serve that everyone fears on tour, here's why tennis players are really scared of Elena Rabakina.